It's New Product Time, Lady Ada. Here it is. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. This week, you have a sensor. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with the BMP280. This is that barometric pressure and temperature sensor from Bosch. So Bosch is well known for the BMP085, the BMP180, and the BMP183. And there's a lot of them. And uh, they finally kind of made up their minds and made the BMP280, which combines the BMP 180 and the 183. The 180 is I squared C only, and the 183 was SPI only. They finally figured out where the BMP 280 is now both I squared C and SPI. It has the same precision temperature sensor. I think it's a couple degrees C, one or two degrees C um, centigrade um, uh, accuracy. And the barometric pressure is one of the best barometric pressure sensors. It can do like a quarter meter to a meter um, altitude accuracy. So you can wire it up uh, pretty easily. We um, have a level shifter and three volt regulator on there so you can wire it up to your Arduino or anything else. We got a library, we got a tutorial. This is kind of it. I think that this is, you know, if you're looking to do a barometric pressure sensor like this, you should probably get this one because this is the newest and, and the best from Bosch. Okay. And then if you want a humidity sensor, don't forget we also have the BME 280, which is um, very similar sounding, yeah. but also adds a humidity sensor, which yeah. some people want barometric pressure, temperature, humidity, so that's that one. This one doesn't have humidity, so that's why there's yeah. two of them. I've noticed you like the Bosch. Bosch. They're pretty good. They're good. They yeah. make, they make good sensors. Yeah, they do. That's cool that a company is known for that. Yeah, no. Is there any other company that's known for making good sensors? Like, wow, those are great sensors. You know, I like the ST sensors, but InvenSense is known for their... Um, their sensors as well, although I'm really digging the, the Bosch 9 DOF sensor that we have okay. in the store. Like, when they come in, they kind of, they're, they're, honestly, their firmware and their code kind of not so great, but the hardware is excellent. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right, Bosch engineers, if you're out there, got some kudos and some What's stuff. What's interesting work on. is analog devices used to have like the best accelerometers, like the ADXL, like they kind of were accelerometers, they, they, they were like MEMS accelerometers, and then they kind of lost it to like Bosch and to its ST. Into a bunch of like Ain't nothing in permanent in electronics. Someone can come in and bosh your I don't know anyone using lunch, you know. analog devices, accelerometers anymore. Okay. Next up, this is really cool. Um, everybody was really excited about this. Yeah, chip, chip quick. quick. Yeah, we got the chip quick in, and the best thing about the chip quick is this video. So this this video, what I really like is this is it. Everybody gets on edge when they watch this. It's like 30 seconds and we do this overview and I watch the comments on like Google Plus and they're like, oh my God, what happened? Like this was a nightmare. But then but then it's all resolved at the end. Because it's like a mess. It's like, no, it is. It's like a no, movie. It's like, what did you do to this thing? And this looks like a total mess. You know what's even worse is when the chip gets pushed off and it's like, oh my God, you ruined it. This is real. Oh, Bang. there's oh, no, ah. solder everywhere. Oh, and then it's like, well, wait. I'm just cleaning it up. And, and then you can clean it up. And then you go, <laughs> that's the sound it makes. But and look at that. Now. Good as new. Good as new. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's while this is playing, uh, yeah. if you want to repeat, I don't know. It's, all, it's on repeat. Okay, it's on repeat. So first up, you put the flux. This is for desoldering components if you don't have a hot air gun, and this is this actually works really really well. Chip Quick is known for how good it is. So the flux just makes it so you have a, a clean atmosphere, and then you melt the Chip Quick solder, which is a special alloy of solder that has a very low melting point. It, it stays liquid for quite a long time. So usually solder, when you melt it, it immediately goes hard. Right? Um, so this has like, it's like eutectic solder, it's like very eutectic. So you can see that after it's melted, it stays liquid for like five to 10 seconds, which gives you enough time to heat up every side of the chip, and then you just slide it off, and then you use wick and, you know, some uh, alcohol wipes or whatever to clean it off. So um, this is like a really great way to remove um, leaded or uh, leaded like leads leaded chips like this one like QFPs, TSOPs, SOICs because it's really hard to remove anything but like resistors and capacitors. I mean you could use it on resistors and capacitors but this really excels at as you can t see is TQFPs and like other large leaded parts. Um, again if you have a hot air gun great but if you don't uh, this can do it and then you, you have little risk of heating up or, or damaging anything else especially because sometimes you have a board where you can't heat up the whole board or it's got a big ground plane very hard to heat up. So. I like the chip quick. Um, I finally got around to getting it. We have the flux, which is just like totally awesome flux. It's just like really good flux anyway. So if you like soldering with flux, pick that up, comes with syringe. We also have two kits. We have um, the lead kit and the uh, Rojas kit. If you're doing um, lead solder, it's a little bit easier. So I'd go with the lead kit. Um, if you have to go Rojas because you have a Rojas shop or all the stuff you're working on with Rojas has to maintain Rojas compatibility lead free, um, pick up the lead free one. It's probably going to be a little tougher to use because again, like lead free at higher temperatures, I don't know, maybe 
the, yeah. it doesn't work so as well. This is all about desoldering. Yeah, it's all about desoldering, and then of course you'd use normal uh, lead or, or lead-free solder to solder the component back on. Okay, that component. Can you can you still reuse it? Yeah, it's it's fine. I mean, what's nice about this technique is that there's no like yanking or grabbing or bending or, or prying. So you know you have to wick the pin. So you'd use that solder wick on the pins, but it's it's pretty yeah. much ready to go. There's no damage. And solder wick is like a hot brush that pulls all the stuff off, right? Yeah, solder, solder wick is kind of interesting. It's the orange stuff that gets used um, after the solder gets melted on. Um, it's a braid. It's actually a copper braid, and it was like a, probably initially used for something else. But copper is, it really likes to suck in solder, and so when you press it up against um, a bunch of solder and you melt it, it wicks it. That's why it's called solder wick. Yeah. The solder comes into the um, fibers, and it kind of like... You can see it, it, it goes in and then the wick turns silver. Like a Brillo pattern. And yeah, and it, yeah. It's, it's like a sponge for solder once you heat it up. So you have to put it over the solder and you heat it up and it just like sucks it up and okay. it really cleans it up. So you should also get a roll of solder wick if you don't have it, but chances are you do. Okay, and then um, this is cool. You wanna do a demo? I'll, I'll just hold it up. Okay, so this is, is always, uh, always one of the uh, nootropic. RGB Matrix backpack. This is the version two of the Nootropic uh, backpack. I uh, we've been carrying version one, and then somebody pointed out there's a version two, and I'm like, you're right, we should carry the version two. So the version one's on sale. We have the version two now. It has, sorry, it okay, has. No, you can you can hold that one. No, it's bright. You don't have to turn. You don't even have to turn. Like this looks like a glowing. Does it? Is yeah, it's okay. Glowing like you. Um, unless people want to see the unicorn. Yeah. It's fine. Well, your unicorn is dimming. Uh, well, because it's been on for yeah, like two hours. Um, there's an Atmega 32, uh, 328 on the back. It's like Arduino compatible. You can use an FTDI cable. Um, and you use like a non-included 5 volts, 2 amp or 4 amp power supply. And this um, plugs in on the back into the little socket very nicely. And basically you can use our code to have animations or patterns or text. We have a library that works with it. It's a kit, so you put it together. But this version works with 16 by 32 panels, which are like the half uh, dimension ones, or the 32 by 32. It doesn't work with the 32 by 64. Those need a mega, like they need a lot of RAM, so you can't use those. But this one works fine. Okay, and then I'd say the star of the show tonight besides you is maybe this OLED. I have this the OLED. This is a cool OLED. I like this because... You like OLEDs. Um, You, met, you set it up to do something cool. So these are the still photos. And uh, tell me a little bit about this OLED, Lady Ada. Okay, so um, this OLED is a really big one. Um, we have these little mini OLEDs in the store. They're like about an inch or an, or an inch and a quarter uh, diagonal. Um, this one is uh, 2.7 inches diagonal and it comes with a module. It's, it's, it comes on this PCB, uh, which is kind of nice because, like, once you get that big, you really need to have like a strong backing and, and you know everything all set up. It has a little boost converter and stuff on the back as well. Um, it's 120 by 64. It actually can do grayscale, but like you, we don't have RAM on the Arduino to buffer a grayscale image, so we just have code for monochrome, and you can see like below the monochrome image. Um, and it works great with our, our GFX library, so it's pretty easy to use. Um, it's just like a gigantic OLED. And what we really like about OLEDs is that they're very high contrast. So if you're using them like indoors or outdoors or the, or the light is going to be changing a lot, these are, are like really vivid. Like they're, they, you don't have that um, kind of diffuse look that you get with LCDs because there's a backlight or even TFTs because there's like this backlight that leaks light everywhere. With OLEDs, every single pixel is a light and it turns it on. So when the pixel's off, it's like black, black. Like you, there's no... There's no light leaking. There's no backlight. It just it's off. So you you can pretty much read them outdoors. Like I mean, it's, if it's really bright, it's hard. But like for the most part, you can read them in, in various brightnesses, um, and they look really really good as well. And um, I have an overhead demo. Yeah, let's go to the overhead because you have a cool demo which I really like. I have a demo, but I don't. I, the problem is it takes a couple minutes for it to set up. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it here. Okay. In the meantime. So um, someone can tweet to add Adafruit, and it'll show up. Or how does it work? Yeah, it looks for the word Adafruit. Um, this is a. It's the demo that. So right now, people that are watching live can they tweet at Adafruit, and this might show up. Maybe. It might show up, but there's a thing is that this uses Zapier, and there's a five minute delay. Okay, so they should do it now. So if they do it now, it'll show up in a couple of minutes, and I'll, I'll maybe I'll shut off while we're okay. doing questions. But, to, but tell us what this demo is, maybe. But this demo is, okay, so I actually have it hooked up to um, our Huzzah ESP-A266, and I've got a FTDI cable over here. 
Um, and then it's this is this module is a three volt logic module, so um, you don't have a we don't have a level shifter involved. If you're using it with Arduino, you do need to have a level shifter, which we include. But it's pretty easy to wire up. You just have to kind of put a couple wires in. And um, what we did is I'll reset this, um, and you can see how nice this looks. Uh, it it's looks like beautiful really, on the screen. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. Like really crisp and beautiful, and like I can even like turn on the light, and it's still readable, which you can't do with a TFT. And this is connecting to um, Adafruit West or SSID here, and, and it's looking for uh, our feed on Adafruit I/O. So this is my testing Adafruit I/O as well. Um, you do need a microcontroller with a one uh, kilobyte of RAM at least, because you have to buffer the entire display. But other than that, it's like a really just lovely large display. I, I want to do a couple of Internet of Things projects. And I don't like TFTs because when they're off, like they still leak a lot of light. So like indoors or like at night, you can kind of tell that they're not off. And also if there's sunlight in the room, because um, I want to have this on the wall, like if mm. it shines on it, you couldn't read it for the TFT. So that's why I went with an OLED. So we'll check back in a couple of minutes and we'll see when the tweets Yeah, if in. anyone tweets at us, um, maybe we'll, we'll I know there was a delay it. and then there's this thing. Yeah. Well, this is the tough part about live. Yeah, so it looks like some people did um, tweet because I okay. saw them on Twitter. So we might see this. All we right. might see this in a few minutes. You can do it, little huzzah. Yeah, All we'll right. see. All right. So with that, Lady Ada, guess what? That was all the new products. Yay!